All right, how's it going everyone? Another Facebook Live video. Today we're gonna to be talking about the differences between plant and animal protein. Okay, I know it says versus here, but it's really not a, you know, a battle between which is better. I'm gonna go ahead and give you an unbiased review of some of the major highlights of plant protein and some of the major highlights of animal protein. And I want you to know that I'm not pro-animal only protein and I'm not anti-plant. I'm very pro-plant and pro-animal. And I wanna give you a, as unbiased a review as I can of these foods, okay? And I also wanna help you understand that it's really not about is plant protein necessarily better than animal protein, but I wanna help you understand that they're, they're complementary, all right? So you should prioritize based on all the information on animal protein to get most of your protein from animals. And we'll, we'll talk about why. And then use plants as a way to get fiber, vitamins, and nutrients, okay? And not necessarily because of their protein content. Well, it'll become pretty obvious why that is the case, okay? So let's go ahead and start off at the very top. Um, I did my best to kind of compare equal uh, characteristics or differences in these um, plant versus animal comparisons. The very first thing is incomplete amino acid profile. Okay, plants have an incomplete amino acid profile, whereas animal proteins have a complete amino acid profile. So what does that mean? Well, there are essential amino acids and there are non-essential amino acids. Essential amino acids means your body can't make them internally, it has to get it from an external source, okay? Animal proteins have complete amino acid profiles, especially the essential amino acids. So you can be sure that when you're eating an animal protein source that you're getting a complete amino acid profile. Whereas with plants, if you were to just like, here's a great example. Let's say that you have a cup of broccoli and then you have the equal amount of calories or weight or whatever in animal protein. If you were to just compare them side by side, plant protein on the amino acid spectrum is gonna be incomplete. It's gonna have a lot of amino acids in it, but it's not gonna be complete. It's gonna be missing some here and there. Whereas the steak or the beef that you're eating is gonna have a complete amino acid profile, okay? So if we're just looking objectively at the complete amino acid, uh, essential complete amino acid profile, animal protein takes the cake on that one, okay? So there, there's a big difference between plant and animal protein. Now, if you're a vegetarian and you're watching this and you're saying, okay, well, he's being biased towards animal, um, just know that with plants, you can actually combine plant protein foods. So like a classic example is rice and beans, okay? Together, they, complete a, they create a complete amino acid profile. So you can get all the amino acids. So you're not hopeless if you don't eat meat, but you do have to work a little bit harder of combining the right plant foods in order to get the complete amino acid profile, okay? So then the next thing I wanna point out is there's a lot of talk and there's a lot of stigma around animal foods being, um, uh, being a source of causing disease, okay? And whereas plants are looked at as you know, the, the essential to fighting disease. And there's a lot of merit to that, but we have to be specific about why that is, okay? So when it comes to animal protein, it has been shown that processed meat is linked to disease, all right? Now, let's point out the word processed. What is processed meat? Processed meat is hot dogs, deli meats, sausages, any type of meat that's been changed in any kind of form and been processed in some way, okay? So there's a very big difference between a ribeye steak that's cut off the cow, that's cleaned and served, to a hot dog that has that is meat that is obviously from a meat source but has been manipulated in so many ways and quite quite frankly probably have a lot of additives in it and who knows if those additives are the reason why the meat is causing disease but more times than not when you're looking at processed meat that's the meat that you see in the studies that are causing disease if you watch that what the health documentary a lot of the studies that, that they were trying to prove that meat caused disease like cancer and heart disease and, and you know, other long-term preventable diseases, it was looking at processed meat, things like deli meat and hot dogs. Okay, again, there's a big difference between that and a ribeye steak or a chicken breast or a salmon filet. All right, so keep that in mind. The studies that, that show that unprocessed meat, so the, you know, the healthier version of meat, actually have been shown to lower things like strokes and even heart disease. So you have to be careful how specific your information gets, 
Okay, if someone just says meat causes cancer, it's gonna be like, okay, well, what kind of meat? Because we don't live in a world today that has just one kind of meat. There's many different kinds of meat because of all the human intervention, all right? Then when it comes to plants, plants have been shown, and this is pretty obvious, to lower things like heart disease. And it makes pretty obvious sense why, right? Plants have a lot of vitamins, have a lot of minerals, have a lot of phytochemicals. Um, you probably didn't know this, but broccoli actually has a phytochemical in it that switches off the gene that causes cancer, okay? So a lot of the phytonutrients in plants help switch off the genes that promote things like cancer, all right? Plants also help reduce a lot of inflammation. The fiber in plants help with reducing overall um, cholesterol level. So a healthy cholesterol level is you know, gonna be different for everyone and we won't go into that in today's video. But if you have excess cholesterol in your body, fiber can help get rid of that. It's not gonna take all of the fiber out, because, or not all of the uh, cholesterol, because you do need some cholesterol to have healthy brain function, healthy muscle function, um, healthy overall uh, joints and you know, mobility but it is going to get rid of that excess cholesterol you don't need, all right? So fiber can help with that. So again, those are two characteristics that I wanted to point out that are very, very important to understand, okay? The next thing that I wanna point out is probably the biggest difference between animal protein and then plant protein. So plant protein is less bio, uh, bioavailable than um, animal protein because of fiber. So what does bioavailable mean? Um, I'll give you an example to make this really, really simple. Okay, let's say that you eat 10 grams of protein from an animal, all right? After it's been digested, it's been absorbed, it's been assimilated, it's now a part of your tissue, you probably only got about eight of those 10 grams through your body because there's always a little bit that goes out through waste, right? Through processing and waste. So you got about eight grams out of the 10 grams that you ate from the animal source. Now, if you have 10 grams of plant protein, there's a good chance that anywhere between five to six grams are actually absorbed, okay? So you're getting anywhere between 50 to 60% of the total you ate, whereas with, plant, with animals, you're getting anywhere between 70 to 80% of the protein that you ate actually being absorbed into your tissues. And that's because the, the, the protein that is in plants is bound to fiber, and fiber is very hard to break down and digest. In fact, you really don't uh, break down fiber too much at all. It pretty much stays intact all the way through your digestive system until you eliminate it. So to, to, to try to access and to try to get um, the most amount of protein from plants is just not feasible. Whereas um, animal protein, because it's already been concentrated and assimilated in a form that's much easier to absorb in the human body, you're gonna get a lot more of that 10 grams of protein, you're gonna get somewhere in the neighborhood of seven to eight grams of the total 10 that you ate. Okay, so that's very important to understand. Um, it's not that you couldn't get your daily uh, needs for protein in plants, you're just gonna have to eat a lot of plants, okay? It's probably more than you can stomach and it's probably more than, than is necessary. Um, because again, we're looking at this as from a, a kind of a complementary standpoint. You wanna prioritize based on all this information, your protein from animals, because it just makes more sense. And you wanna prioritize the other things that animal foods don't necessarily have through your plant intake. So they work together. Again, this isn't like you know, plants versus animals. I know I wrote that because I wanted to kind of get your attention and see you know, how we could kind of talk about these two. But at the end of the day, you shouldn't really be looking for plants as a source of protein. It's really not what it's created for. It's not really what it needs to, you know, needs to be the, the primary source of your protein in your diet, okay? And then the very last bullet that I wanna point out is that animal foods are high in vitamin D, vitamin B12, hema iron, and zinc, all right? You can't find these minerals in high concentrations or even bioavailable concentrations in plant foods, okay? So it's important to understand that you get a lot of your vitamin D, a lot of your B12, a lot of your iron. So if you're a woman and you're anemic, eating red meat can actually help with that. Animal sources of iron, not very bioavailable and can even be dangerous if they're too high in concentrations. It's one of the reasons why I don't recommend people taking iron supplements because a lot of times it's so concentrated that it can actually cause things like constipation and it's just not good for you. Um, a lot of vegans have to supplement with B12, right? Because you can't, if you're a vegan, you don't eat um, any animal foods, whether it's a byproduct or a meat, so you have to supplement with B12. Anytime that you have to supplement a, an essential 
vitamin or essential mineral or essential nutrient, I have a hard time believing that is a viable lifestyle, okay? I'm not here to say that if you're a vegan that I hate you or that I think you're stupid or anything like that, but I am saying if we're looking at it objectively, if you have to supplement with something that's essential, I think that it's more important to look at finding a way to just eat the food that has it in it, okay? That's just my, my perspective. And then, you know, things like vitamin D, you know, I've heard, you know, mixed reviews because essentially photosynthesis is the plant's process of, you know, doing everything that it does in its growth process. It'd be hard for, to believe that there isn't some vitamin D in plants. Um, it just has low concentrations, whereas animal foods have higher concentrations. So it kind of goes back to the whole bioavailability spectrum or the bioavailability characteristic. Because the animal, I mean, think about it, cows eat tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of grass. That grass gets synthesized and concentrated in their muscle tissue, and then we eat that, and now it becomes more available for us. So the cow is kind of a, kind of a device between us and the, the plant to help us get more of that protein and help us get um, you know, more higher concentrations of that protein. So anyway, guys, that's my video, Plants versus Animal Proteins. I hope that helped you understand the differences between these two. And again, I want to reemphasize that it's not really, you know, plants are bad, animals are good when it comes to protein. It's just understanding their strengths and their weaknesses. Plants do not have a strength towards supplying us with adequate protein, okay? Animals do. Animal foods don't always have an ad adequate amount of the uh, vitamins and minerals that plants have. So what's the best thing to do? Well, instead of fighting over just eating plants or just eating animals, why don't we combine the two and use, you know, the smart person, in my opinion, is looking at both of these and seeing that they complement each other, not that they need to be in opposition of each other, okay? If we're just looking at it objectively. I understand that some people have beliefs. I'm not here to, to um, change your beliefs. I do want to challenge them, though, because I think it's important to be educated. And sometimes the education that you get from people that talk about vegan sources of protein are biased, all right, and you know, just like there are plenty of people on the animal side, like carnivores, that are biased towards you know animal protein. I'm trying to be somewhere in the middle here and just give you the the, the facts about the differences between these two types of protein. So, anyway, guys, if you have any qu uh, questions, comments, concerns, or you have anything that you want to say in regards to this topic, please leave it in the comment section below. Whether this is you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, and then I will respond to them as quickly as I can so I can give you more information and more help. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching today's video. I will see you in a future video.